Hello and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Carrie Oderman with UATV. The Office of the President of Ukraine is preparing bills regulating the procedure for reporting corruption offenses, as well as material rewards for whistleblowers. They'll be paid up to 10% of the value of the corruption they expose. To talk more about the pros and cons of this initiative, we're joined today in the studio by Matthew Schaff, Director of Freedom House Ukraine. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Schaff. Happy to be here. Let's start with talking a little bit about what you do at Freedom House. Tell me about Freedom House Ukraine and their role in the development of some of these protocols. Sure. Uh, so I'm the director of the Freedom House office in Ukraine, uh, and I manage all of our programs and, and advocacy and activities and, and basically everything that, that we're doing. Uh, we have a small team uh, here, and we work uh, closely with colleagues in, uh, in, in the U.S. and elsewhere uh, on our Ukraine programs, uh, on uh, analysis and advocacy on Ukraine, uh, and so on. So uh, we've had an office here for the last few years, uh, working closely with, with, with the government, with civil society, with others to uh, improve protections for human rights and, uh, and strengthen the democratic institutions in Ukraine. Okay, and then specifically, these new, um, the new legislation that's um, being discussed for protection of whistleblowers, did Freedom House have a specific role in developing those, or did they make suggestions? Uh, so we've made suggestions. Uh, uh, we have, uh, have been doing work on this issue in, in Ukraine for a while, uh, in particular highlighting the, uh, the important role that whistleblower, whistleblowers play uh, in uh, bringing to the public's attention uh, certainly corruption, but not only. Uh, human rights abuses, uh, environmental destruction, and, and, and so on. So we see whistleblowers as, as, uh, as, uh, as playing a really important role in a democratic society uh, and have been encouraging uh, protection for whistleblowers. Uh, what we see is that when someone uh, has information and they uh, bring it to the public's attention, uh, there are oftentimes reprisals against them. Uh, so you work at a government agency, you uh, publish information or share it with a journalist about uh, some kind of abuse that's, that's taking place, and uh, you could be fired uh, as a result of, of, of this activity. Uh, and uh, like in many other countries of the world, uh, Ukraine should also be protecting the rights of these people, uh, certainly labor rights as, as part of that, but, but also other, other types of protections to ensure that they uh, can be safe uh, uh, to bring this information to the public's attention. Now, as I understand it, there are two structures for someone that's detected um, corruption. There should be internal structures available to them at their workplace, but mm -hmm. also external. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the best route for Ukraine? Are they working on the internal structures? Or are they focusing on the external structures? Or are they working on both right now? Uh, certainly both are necessary. Um, the, uh, there, there's a set of, of international standards and best practices. Uh, and, and I hope that uh, the, the president's office, uh, this initiative is, is moving in the direction uh, that, that other, uh, other countries have taken uh, in following these best practices. But uh, certainly within any organization, you should have, uh, you should have procedures to report abuses and other, uh, other types of bad things happening. Uh, but the reality is, is that these mechanisms don't always work. And so uh, what needs to happen is definitely within sort of the government for, uh, for these to be established, but then also to create other, other ways that this inf information can be, uh, to, can be released or brought to the attention uh, of the public, uh, to the attention of policymakers, and, and so on. So uh, sort of a two-track solution is, is what's necessary. Let's talk about what basically is a reward. It mm -hmm. could be a great deal of money, and wouldn't that affect the, an the anonymity of the whistleblower? Uh, certainly, um, the uh, you know we we haven't taken a position on 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 the re the the reward issue. I know that some countries do uh, do have similar provisions, and in, in the United States and in some places does as well. Um, and, uh, and the anonymity and confidentiality of of journalistic sources of whistleblowers is quite important, and so. Um, yes, if, uh, if someone chooses to take advantage of a provision which uh, allows them to get some kind of reward, then, then they would be making a decision uh, to, to not be anonymous, to not be co uh, a confidential source. Um, so uh, it would make sense that uh, if, if someone wanted to make that choice, then they could do that. But then also if they wanted to uh, release this information in a way that was confidential uh, and anonymous, that they could also do that so that both options be, be available to people. Do you have any examples that you can share with us about the process someone would go through when they choose to become a whistleblower, when they notice mm -hmm. corruption in the workplace? Um, what would the first steps be? 
Well, so what what we have focused on in particular is the sort of the role of, of the media and journalists and their relationship with with whistleblowers and with sources. Um, what we find uh, is that. Uh, people oftentimes look to the media as a way to uh, share information about things that they're seeing within government agency, within business, uh, abuses of, of one sort or another. Um, and so uh, they might share this information with a journalist who uh, might look into the question. They might publish uh, the information that they receive from, from the source. And so from one perspective, it's a question of um, these individuals who are taking personal risk to share with the public uh, information about uh, something that's that that shouldn't be happening, but is, but then also the work of journalists and the media uh, to be looking into questions of of, abu of abuse, of misuse of money uh, within government agencies, of corruption, environmental destruction, and so on. And so, uh, we see it as as an issue of of the people who are bringing this information to the public, and then also to the media and the and the, the rights of of media of journalists in a democratic society to be. Uh, asking hard questions to be uh, publishing information uh, about these types of things. Now, uh, corruption has been an issue on the agenda dealing with Ukraine for many years. Is the situation here improving? That's a good question. Uh, it, 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 uh, it will continue to be on, on everyone's agenda, I think, for a while. Um, there have been some, uh, some uh, important improvements, certainly the creation of, of anti-corruption institutions, uh, uh, I'm talking about the Anti-Corruption Bureau, uh, the, uh, the Anti-Corruption Court, and, and these developments are, are quite important. Uh, but what we're seeing is that uh, is they're, not, they're not fully functioning yet. And so uh, it's a little too early to say, you know, with these particular institutions, for example, um, what, uh, what their eventual impact will be. Um, the reality is, is that uh, is, as far as we understand it, there continues to be a good deal of corruption at the high level and at the low level. Um, and so uh, it takes time for these institutions, for these new, new procedures to, uh, to, to start to function. And we think actually that protection of whistleblowers and of journalists uh, and, and their important work is an important part of that. There's been a focus from NGOs and international agencies on educating the younger generation here in Ukraine about anti-corruption. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the positive effects of this work? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the role that young people play in changing culture uh, is, is really quite important uh, and in a whole host of issues. So, um, you know, anecdotally, my impression is that, uh, that that young people are less willing to play by the same old rules that uh, that were quite common in, in Ukraine for a long time, and certainly sort of cor corrupt ways of doing business and, and making deals as part of that. Um, and so, uh, young people uh, want to see a modern country uh, that is European in the way it does business, the way that people relate to each other. Uh, in the way that uh, the culture is free and open to diverse opinions and perspectives. And I think that this is part of that, of our rejection of, uh, of, of corruption and uh, of sort of shoving things under the carpet and pretending that they don't, don't exist. Now, if you could give advice directly to President Zelensky's new administration, what would it be then? Uh, there are, uh, there, there are, uh, Ukraine is quite rich when it comes to uh, experts on the issue of fighting corruption, experts on protections for whistleblowers. Uh, so to take advantage of, of, of the experts, of the expertise that exists in Ukraine uh, so far, they don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, when it comes to whistleblowers, uh, there, was, there was in fact a, a, a draft law that was introduced in the previous session of the RADA that was pretty good. Um, and so, you know, working with some of the, the, the work that has already been done would be a great approach to take advantage of the civil society organizations, the anti-corruption experts that, that exist in Ukraine already uh, that have been working on this issue and include them in any uh, development process for new policies and laws. Okay, um, whistleblowers from areas that aren't um um, directly connected with government, they mm -hmm. don't won't experience the same securities. There was um, there was a discussion uh, about this and a conference in August. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any more information about how normal people will be protected? Uh, I'm not I'm not uh, familiar with the, the 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 conference that you're referring to, uh, but what um, 
what generally what we have said is that the definition of a whistleblower sh uh, should be quite quite broad. The definition of uh, a journalistic source uh, should be quite broad. So uh, you don't need to be uh, bringing uh, information of public interest to the public's attention about abuses or other types of uh, violations. Uh, it doesn't require that you have a certain position within a certain institution. Really, anyone could somehow get access to this information. And so uh, to, uh, to be having sort of a, a very broad definition of this type of activity to protect uh, people regardless of you know, who they are and what their job is, uh, to, protect this, to be protecting the activity and the people who are, uh, who are fulfilling this important role in society rather than sort of uh, having narrow definitions of that. What kind of markers does your organization use to measure the progress in this area? Sure. So uh, Freedom House publishes annual reports okay. uh, on uh, on human rights and, and democratic development in, in Ukraine and in every country in the world. Um, and so uh, our reports do look at protection uh, for whistleblowers, for example. Um, and uh, so we have uh, extensive methodologies that, that you can find on our website for like what are the specific questions mm -hmm. that we look at. But um, uh, you know, certainly protection of uh, of whistleblowers is is part of that. Also, media freedom is is definitely part of that. And whether journalists have the ability to uh, to uh, to conduct investigations, so investigative journalists in particular uh, are a focus of of our work. Whether they can receive information, whether they can share it with the public, uh, without threats to their physical safety, without legal threats, uh, and other other types of challenges. Now you mentioned you've been here for several years, and so mm -hmm. is your organization. How has um, how are you charting Ukraine's progress? So over the last few years, um, there has been uh, there's definitely been some progress. Uh, our reports tend to uh, we tend to wait for results. Um, and so, uh, if you look at the, the reporting that Freedom House does, we uh, we make note of uh, of different developments of uh, new institutions that are created. Um, but uh, the the scores, for example, will change when when significant progress is noted. Um, and so, uh, Ukraine has uh, has been improving slowly uh, in in uh, in our reports, and and I hope that it it picks up uh, in the near future. To to be honest. So. They've come some way. They still have a bit to go. Yes. Well, Ukraine is considered partly free um, in our report, uh, Freedom in the World. Um, and uh, I think, yeah, in, 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 the, in the coming years, uh, it can certainly move into the, the free category uh, if uh, once some of the reforms that have already been introduced uh, really start sort of functioning and having an impact. And also with additional reforms. Um, one of the, the reforms that we've been calling for is reform of the security service of Ukraine. Uh, which has been on, on our agenda and, and many other uh, many others' agenda, including certainly Ukrainians' agendas, but uh, also uh, international community. And uh, the Zelensky, President Zelensky, his office have been talking a lot about security service reform, and we're waiting to see how that's actually going to work out. Now, if that uh, that happened, uh, I think that would be quite good for the ratings as well. Well, we look forward to hearing more updates from you and from Freedom House. That was Matthew Schaff, director of Freedom House Ukraine. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more.